Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary, hello and welcome. Uh, it me, it Christy here uh, on, on your Monday. Monday, July 13th, 2020. That's good. I've, I've done a timestamp again. I don't know what good that does in our current situation. Because time, I, I'm helping you because time just kind of slips away from you. I, I want you to know that it is progressing even though it doesn't feel like it all the time. I'm not going to make a bang lot, hot local mom command. That's not going to happen. So, uh, we're going to play some more Sunless Guys today. Uh, which I'm excited about. Uh, there's some stuff I want to talk about first. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, is that Black Lives Matter and Indigenous Lives Matter and Indigenous Lands Matter. Um, the lives of people of color matter. All of these things. Uh, there are still protests going on in our country and around the world. And... While we appreciate very much if you choose to subscribe to our channel and throw bits at us, uh, we will gladly take your money. But if you have a bunch of extra time and energy and money to spare, we ask that you choose to, we ask that you look into handing that to organizations that are helping uh, protesters, helping the current civil rights movement out uh, because they. They need as much momentum as we can get. We need as much momentum as we can get. Don't know if I feel comfortable putting the we. That's probably not great to do. Um, it's it's a hell of a time to be alive. I also misspelled my name. Did I? Oh, I sure did. Dunk. I can fix that while I speak. So. Uh, if you bang donate in the chat, you will see a list, uh, which I need to be updating, of uh, places you can go to give some of your give some of your power to this uh, to this awesome force in our world. Uh, and please, please do that. Please, please do that. Um, another thing I want to say that should be better. Yes, thank you. I'm aware I closed a dockable window. Another thing that I need to tell you is about Sunless Guys, the game we're about to play, and that and it is a horror game. This is your content warning. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is okay. It's pretty tame. It's ship-to-ship -ship combat. It, it's not particularly graphic. But, hmm. Excuse me, just one moment. But there's a lot of text in the game. And some of the text describes horrible things, uh, eldritch monstrosities, uh, self-harm and the grisly injury of others, um, upsetting wildlife and uh, more upsetting individuals. And I'm going to try my best to read forward to where problems might be occurring and warn you if there's something particularly egregious. Uh, but I might miss some. Uh, I'm very sorry if you need to have a, if you need to, like, talk about what you're feeling, this is a safe place to do that. Or if you need to bounce for a little bit and come back, or for the rest of the evening, that's also okay. Please take care of yourselves. Uh, so, all that said, I'm gonna hit Sunless, guys, and while we wait for it to boot, um, I'm gonna talk about... Sunless Skies conceptually. So this is, as you can see at the bottom, episode 9 of Sunless Skies. And I've decided that I'm going to cap myself at 12. Uh, we're probably not going to reach... Uh, we're, not, we're absolutely not going to be able to do everything within the span of four more streams, this one included. Uh, so... We're going to be prioritizing our officers because I like the officer stories and also they're the thing that gets sent back the most if we were to die. Um, so we're going to be doing that. Uh, and if we get to 12 streams, which is like three solid months, and there's still a lot to do, then I'm just going to say we're, we're going to put this on the shelf for a while and come back to it later. Well, we're going to finish the game, I think, uh, or at least see a, a good more chunk of the content, but 
three solid months is a long time to be spending in a single game, and I, and I kind of want to do something else. Right, it'll go up on the video James shelf, where James keeps all their videos. This reminds me of the last night's Pathfinder game, our Oracle of yogg Shalgoth. Uh, cast Phantom Seed, and her player says they don't really look like horses, and it reminded me of the donkeys from Warbury Juxtamare. Nice. That's the that's the uh, that's the great thing is where you can uh, just go. It's it's this thing, but it doesn't look anything like it. But it's still technically and legally a horse. I just realized Juxtamare means by the sea. Yes, it does. Which it is by the sea. It's by the uh, little bit of the sunless sea that um, managed to come into the come into the sky with them. Maybe we'll see that. Our, our first thing that we are going to be trying to do today is find Perdurance. Uh, I said that we were going to... Um, Huh. Those are skulls. I said that we were going to uh, focus in on our officers, and that's true. We have two officers who need uh, something done at Perdurance. Our uh, Rat Brigade, who are still looking for the, uh, the rest of the members of their patrol to help open the uh, vault left to them by their lieutenant. And the Incognito Princess. We haven't had a lot of Incognito... Uh, interactions with the incognito princess very purposefully because she's terrifying uh but we're going to get some more of that and i'm going to just go ahead and say if you see the incognito princess's picture in this window then there's probably going to be some upsetting dialogue letting you know uh we're going to move on uh before we do that let's have a moment of reflection let's take a moment for us Uh, which of these have we not done? We haven't done the bell tolls, have we? Yet. I almost forgot about the Incognito Princess, and that was a happier world for a moment, right? I don't think we've done the bell tolls. Okay, so we haven't done the bell tolls. We don't have a left or right uh, anymore. So the bell tolls, a coterie, a circuit symposium, an esteemed predecessor, a disgraced predecessor. I presume we can only choose one of these. And steam and soot. Uh, any of those options jump out at anyone? Or I can just click the bell tolls as the next one if uh, if everything, if everyone, uh, if no one has a, a particular opinion. Uh, I like the mask, but skulls are neat. I don't, I don't. I know what the bell tolls is when we click into it. I, I don't think I've ever done secret symposium. So, if I were to choose amongst the the two, I would probably go with this or coterie. I also don't know what that is. Badrod says let's do symposium. I don't know. That's two for. The movement is seconded and passed. A secret symposium. Ahem. In a midnight lecture hall, a cadre of masked experts gathered to present papers on a subject the ministry had forbidden. You unlock this by having affiliation academic at two or more. I'm amazed that we have that, okay? Prohibited theories were shared, research partnerships born. You continued to correspond in code on the matters debated. What was the topic of the symposium? A forensic assessment of the sun's remains following London's relocation to new astronomy has become a crucial, well-funded discipline, but the fate of physiology and Albion's dead sun are strictly barred from study. Or the condemned classics and international perspective. Deep in the ministry, native-speaking scribes translate their nation's literature into editions palatable to the auditors, but you studied both the uncensored originals and those unprinted works deemed Hazardous to British sentiment. Uh, I like both of these. Hi, Jamie. Also, hi, uh, hi, Slocks. Hi, Mox. Hi, Bad Road. Hi, Andy. Hi, Katie. 
I'm only here for 15 minutes, but I'm here. Thank you for spending 15 minutes with us. Uh, so do we want to be researching the, the hideous and broken sun or the classics of literature that we're not allowed to read because uh, Britain is Britain and Britain is the worst? I like being hazardous to Britain generally, but dead sun. Bad Road also says dead sun. Let's take dead sun then. It gives us more punch power too. Heck, miniature, read a book. I, I agree with you, but I'm uh, I'm trying to keep it moving. We can cast fist. Oh, we have more punch. Maybe we can cast fist. Um. So let's. How much money? Uh, how are we at on supplies? We have fuel and supplies. That's good. Do I have any like commerce quests? open or did I get rid of all of those I did get rid of all of those that's good oh and our intrepid cavi we still can't uh, assign to our ship because we don't have a high enough mirrors uh, but we can deal with that later where the fuck is perdurance um probably um, probably back here somewhere Probably in this cut. Uh, although I don't quite know where. I actually might be around here. So let's go up and to the left. Up and to the left. And we'll fill in this area. We'll send our bat friend out. And if it turns out that there's nothing there, we can zoom along down the the rim until we find what we want. Uh, I'm going to be background noise. Storm is rolling in and brain just started feeling it. So I'm going to try and walk and pill it off. That's... I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it's like this. The, um... Incoming storms are very good for our state in a, in a general sense. Uh, Oklahoma was afraid that we were going to be in the middle of a hellacious drought for a while, um, which is apparently not going to be the case. There are side effects um, on a personal level, which sucks. I guess we're just back here munching and stuff. There's a, uh, there's a thing this way. Ow. Some sort of Detamaran. Okay, well, that's a problem. There's a lot happening just over here. We're gonna go around. Nah. Uh, we're gonna go around, I think. We're not gonna deal with that. That all sucks. Oh, hey, the Baker's Trust. I don't think I would trust a baker who got their supplies from here. That seems bad. What the fuck are you? Consider. This elaborate memorial is carved with curses. We got a sky story out of that. That's nice. Can we go through here? We cannot go through there. Ow. Just taking some hits is all. I would have questions, TM, about the bread. Uh, well, well, no, no. A lot of, uh, a lot of combat happening today. Just a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going down. Over here, uh, near the Serene Mausoleum. I think we're just gonna juke on that. And this is gonna be the storm that speaks, huh? 
Yeah. Huh, well. This is going well. Let's repair our hull, I suppose. Send our bat friend out to see what our bat friend can see. And our bat friend has not seen a goddamn thing. So let's just loop. Let's go this way. Go, go away. Go away from the storm, Lee. Go away. Lee, run to the center. Forsyth, run to the center. Whatever the fuck you do, do not stand next to other people. Holding a rave at the Serene Mausoleum Saturday night. Oh no, you shouldn't do that. That's what starts the events of Hunter the Reckoning. The video game for the Nintendo 64. You're correct, the GameCube. There's a tale of terror. The monument reads, Be ye also ready. So that's good. I like standing next to people. Social distancing has been hell. I'm very sorry. No one's, uh... I, I think no one's doing that great. I'm glad that social distancing is a thing. Because it's better than the alternative. As I guess we're about to learn. That's all I'm going to say on this particular topic. I never did get more than about three levels deep into that game. The La Samba Bros fight just kept wrecking us with his shadow moves. Oh no. I like social distancing. I like when I don't have to claw people's eyes out for getting too close. That's also good. This is where the sun is, hey? Yeah, that's the sun underneath us. Oh, you're still fighting the... Uh-oh. You're still fighting the... The tentacle mess. Good. You all just keep having a good time fighting that tentacle mess. I'm gonna go around... And away. So what the fuck's over here, then? Why is there so much goddamn fighting happening today? This isn't good. A ministry monitor, monitor defeated. I guess we're gonna sweep up these remains. Uh, a tentacle train is where we got eels, correct? That is where we got eels, and that's why I want to stay as far the fuck away from it as possible. Because that almost killed us before the other tentacle train killed us. Because I was like, oh no, I can take tentacle train. And then it turns out I couldn't have taken tentacle train. Uh, the ministry's monitors are delicate, elongated vessels housing a telescopic array of lenses and sounding devices. In addition to aiding the revenue in attracting smugglers, they perform other, less public services for Her Majesty. We can search for confisc confiscated contraband uh, if we find something that's probably going to be one of the um, the smuggling trade goods, uh, or it does say confiscated illegal goods, or we could search for ministry secrets. I would quite like a hold of some secrets, but let's just, uh, well, that didn't go well either. You've gained 50 sovereigns. The monitor must have had a quiet patrol. The hold is empty, but your search party manages to recover some inexpensive personal effects. Watches, rings, and etc. Uh, we didn't get a stovepipe nameplate either, which is not ideal. Archer is pretty funny when David Cross isn't writing it. Yeah. Performing other less public services for Her Majesty Eyes. Oh, hey. Uh, here's a bunch of just graves. We can break open a coffin and maybe get some money, but we're not going to do that. We're going to reduce terror because we desperately need to do that. It's a really cool, uh, it's a really cool drawing they've done of the dead son. Like, it's super rad. 
Oh, you are fucking kidding me. Okay. Okay, cool. No, I'm glad. I'm glad this is what's happening. Why are you like this? Get away. Hmm. No, you're not... You're not showing me anything. So I think... Did you, did you contract a case of eels again? No, we stayed away from the eels, but searching that, um... Searching that graveyard did spawn a Sky Scrivener or whatever the thing is that I keep calling it the wrong thing because it's funny. Um... Huh, I wonder if it's out by Wolry Juxtamere. That would actually make a lot more sense. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pop into the Royal Society and refill our fuel and supplies, head back to London, and then head out north because it's probably in here somewhere since it wasn't anywhere in there. Yeah, yeah. We're out running it now. Yeah, we've we've upgraded our um, engine significantly uh, a while ago. Scrivener is a neat software. What does it do? Oh no, wait! I've heard of Scrivener before. It's like a it's not a it's not a word processor. It's a like writing. Uh thing. Words. I did good words. It's a novel planning application for Mac OS. Yes, that's the thing I was trying to get to and didn't. Boob. Boob. I want you to know I read boob and immediately said it out loud and now one wife and two cats are staring at me questionably. That's good. Alright, so... Yeah, we're just gonna... move out all of this. And get ourselves into the society, because we we're running low, actually. Maybe we'll see if we can't pick up some... Uh, some stuff while we're there. There's actually a lot to do with the Royal Society. I don't want to stop and do a lot of it. But grabbing some very novel train parts might be nice. This game is absolutely living this game absolutely is living in a society. I mean, you're not wrong. The, side, the society it's living in is bad, and it has things to say about that. So, Mox, I did read that as boob lube vid. That's good. Uh, can we make a dinghy happen over here? Nah, we got all the dinghies right here, I think. I want boob lube. Wouldn't that just be regular lube? I mean, it depends on how hard you twist the titty, I guess. What'd you find? Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad you found that. Um, Mr. Menagerie has fucked off to the throne of the Hour King. 
London, probably. Uh... No, Rochester Club is the racing place. That's where we don't want to go. Portsmouth Arsenal. Here we go. Smoke and soot, glass and steel. The ring of hammers on metal. The swearing of engineers. The acrid scent of sweat. Here in the bowels of Portsmouth House, the scientists of the Royal Society work to produce experimental designs for daring captains. A team of engineers led by the energetic mechanic are excited to get to work on whatever you'll pay them for. Here you can convert goods to experimental modifications which can be exchanged for unique equipment. Uh, we can just throw stuff into here and get some modifications. What do you have? What's good that you have? Acquire the Montresor Chamber, a secure chamber for your own private use. It increases your hold and quarters by four. Actually, let's bring up our chip thing that we can't see. Good, good. I'm glad it's that. Um, I feel like I could have seen that coming, them taking a meme, making fun of them, thinking it's something to use unironically. Yeah, it's like that, right? Uh, the Mighty Pen Defensive Library System, a pneumatic library staffed by its own rat librarian armed with many tactical tomes. Oh, it increases your armor and hold by four and also is a... No, I thought it was a gun, but it's not a gun. It's, it goes in the auxiliary slots. The Mechanical Turk. A chess player. This gives us hidden compartments. A forward-mounted cannery? I think not. Uh, mining and smelting array. This is a mining array that increases our hold. I think that's actually quite good. We would need 10 experimental modifications to get to that. Can we... By 1, by 3, by 1, by 2, by 2, by 4. Five? Do we have more than one condemned experiment? We do not. Alright. We'll come back to this. Or I might do it off stream. Uh, futzing about with our loadout isn't the most interesting thing. Oh, dang it, dang it, dang it. I was gonna get... I was gonna get supplies. We need supplies, actually. It seems like if we lived in a society, there'd be a Nintendo Switch on a retail shelf somewhere within 100 miles of me. You're not wrong. It seems like that's something that we would have gotten working. No, don't explore. Quit exploring. Stop exploring. Don't... Don't do exploring. Wait. Did that say the... Our quartermaster wanted something here. Oh no, that's not what that is. Let's talk to our quartermaster, actually. I don't think we've done that since we uh, dropped it off at the uh, at Faith's Fall. Uh, Ask the hoarder about other glands. Oh right, we went into the carcass of a messenger and pulled out one of its glands. Okay. Faith's fall couldn't have been its only chance. The universe is too massive for such small despairs to be true. The Chiropterous Hoarder has gouged its frustration on the walls. The marks are an inch deep, at least. At your question, it glares and claws a fresh shape onto an unmarked section of its quarters. Another messenger corpse, its necrosis somehow captured in a few immaculate scratches. A house of rods and chains, it growls. If we went there, I'm sure we'd find another gland. If not, I will dig through its necrotizing flesh until agony causes it to fruit another just to make me stop. Uh, you will need an unlicensed chart or two visions of heaven. Ye. I think we can do that. We'll do that for you, friend. We'll figure that out. We need to back... Eat. Need to back out. Oh, bye, Jamie. Thank you for uh, thank you for spending what time you had with us. I'm just gonna loop around this way. I think. 
because there's some sort of question mark over this way. And I'm hoping that it's um, a cool thing that I can pick up and then sell off for money. Uh, what I'm afraid it is, is another time weft, which we got trapped in last week, that caused us to actually gain a bunch of supplies and also just a shit ton of terror. No, wait, it didn't increase our terror either. We lost experience from it. That's what it was. Which isn't ideal. I do... So, this fucking storm system apparently caught every single goddamn meteorologist in the world by surprise. Because in every single place I had gone to for the last couple of weeks had been... Hey, uh, you droughts, it's going to be 100 plus degrees for like several weeks. You're going to have to suck that up. And now the rains are coming in and everything's like actually pretty fucking reasonable temperature wise. It's nice. It's just so nice to not have to worry about that thing. Uh, the question mark's coming up. And it's one of these. Okay. I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm going to get trapped in a horrible vortex of time. A windswept habitation. Here is a tenement of empty housings that has never been occupied. We could leave. We could rest and recover. Let's rest and recover, because that's going to kill our terror a little bit. Mm. We need to kill our terror more. Uh, but... Well... This could have been a better series of decisions for me. Uh, they're probably going to miss us. Yeah, there it is. Problem is they're ahead of us now. Between us and where we want to go. Uh, or they've disappeared. Just going to do that. Mm, took a couple hits, but it's fine. We've got a lot of hull, she said. Tempting fate. I keep hitting R to reload, which isn't what that button does. Yeah, okay, we got there. Just gonna grab that. Woo! A star-seared explorer defeated. The engine has ventured into sunless wastes and spent too long under the cold, searing light of distant stars, which burned all reason from its crew. Now its last voyage is at an end. Let's just loot the hold, because we don't need savage secrets or tales of terror right now. And I don't want to roll on something that's probably going to be a 15% chance. The box is gleaming, resinous, and heavy as King Bill's coffin. I did say hold. Pretty. We have two minis We have two ministry stamped permits. I mean, let's loot the hole too. I mean, while we're about it, we might as well loot everything. Just get a. Uh, just get elbow deep in there. Grab yourself something. Gonna, excuse me, have a quick sip of this, uh, store brand cherry soda. Delicious. Oh, right, I was gonna do a thing and I forgot to do a thing. It's fine, I'll do it during the break. Uh, uh-oh. You are not where you thought you were. The sky is wrong, and this is not where you were meant to be. Was it a trick of the mist? Has a wind carried you astray? Have the heavens themselves turned on their axis? Uh, we can painstakingly retrace our path, or we can push forward and hope that somewhere behind, beyond you will find familiar territories. We have a 23% chance of that. Not gonna fuck with it. We can spend the fuel. It's fine. 
time's moved on, but we don't have anything time relevant right now. That's good. You you were in a maze of twisting passages all alike. It is very dark. You are likely to be eaten by a rubberyman. Hopefully we're not going to grab anything too important when we get elbow deep. That's good. I think there's I think there's just something we can get a hold of. It's going to be fine. Oh, hey, there's the Sapphire and Steel Yards. That's where they make the ships. We should break into there and steal like 30 ships. Then we'll have a whole fleet. Then this can just be a uh, fall in London truck simulator. I was about to say I would play that game and then realize that, like, um, consuming shadow exists. Christie stole 30 ships. That's as many as three tens, and that's terrible. Oh no, don't do that. Uh, the hour of the wolf. It is late and you are alone. Doubts prey on you. Is this the path you should have taken? You trespass upon the precincts of heaven. What price will be extracted of you? What price have you already paid? We can drink, drink, and forget what you have seen. See something, say nothing, and drink to forget. The bottle sits on your desk and its contents are dusty gold. Unlocked when a taste for the bottle is, you are developing a taste for the bottle. That seems real. We're not, so beyond the fact that I don't want to actually fuck with this thing right here, we would lose a vision of the heavens and we actually need one of those for, uh, the, for Mr. Apple. So we are just going to roll that 44% chance that we will come out of this alive. Nope. It's fine, probably. You've gained a further five terror. Your doubts are hungry tonight. They seize on your past decisions one by one, worrying at each like wolves at a lamb. Sleep is impossible. When your shift arrives, you arise haggard and unrested. You splash water on your face and wonder what mistakes you will make today. I mean, let's... speaking of mood... This is a song about a very difficult concept. Anxiety. How many of you here can say that you've never experienced anxiety? This is a song called Beautiful Creatures by Wantola. It's very good. You should go listen to it. Hmm. Hi, Riz. Well, let's do this then. Your aunt is here, dear God. Somehow she has found her way to the high wilderness. She is trying to get your attention with the frantic waving of her horrible hat. I know you've seen me. Listen, I've quite exhausted my possibilities here. I am a serviceable quartermaster. I have friends everywhere, and my scones are to die for. How's that for a curriculum vitae? Now, let me aboard. Is she even your real aunt? Either way, you will have to deal with her. Uh, Beautiful People by Wontola, not to be confused with Beautiful People by Marilyn Manson, which is mostly about how hard rich kids doing drugs have it. Ooh. Correct. Sure, let's employ my aunt as a quartermaster. She smiles with sincere delight. Here, take my bag. Her bag is very heavy. And my hat. Her hat is also very heavy. Your crew are alarmed when she boards your engine. Their alarm only increases when she begins to pass comment. After a thorough survey of your locomotive, she graces you with a smile. There is work to be done. She has extracted gossip from you before she is even boarded. The woman is skilled. You are learning about an inconvenient aunt. Good. 
I'm glad that that's what's happened. Uh, let's look at the bazaar and see if we can't luck into something for Perdurance. We cannot fuck. Uh, I was really hoping uh, one of these things would just say, hey, a delivery to Perdurance, and we could just, like, follow the arrows, but that's not where we are. Uh, let's put our... Let's put our hamster in the bank. And let's put our let's put our time in the bank. And we upgraded to the Yeah, we upgraded to the other one. That's fine. Inconvenient. Thank you, Bad Road. That's correct. Um that's those, and is there anything we can grab here that's going to be life-changing for us? I don't think that's the case. Um, we can get some extra hold if we want to dump one of our um, auxiliary slots, but I really don't. And here's a big gun, but the big gun we have is better than that gun. So, fuck it, I suppose. I think we need all of this. I think we need all of this. Let's just go. Uh, actually, is there anything I can explore that's going to bring down my fucking terror? Like, a bit. Like, even a little bit? The Silken Salon? Oh, this is sharing a bunch of gossip. Yeah, yeah. To gain sovereigns and experience. That's not what we want. Uh, explore London. Collect a telegram for the incautious driver. These are expensive to send. It must be important. Huh. Oh. The driver reads the telegram without expression. They show it to you without saying a word. Come home, stop, your father, stop, funeral, stop, new Winchester, stop, drive safe, stop. It was ill for a long time, the driver finally manages. I need to pay my respects. We'll, we'll get to that here in a moment. We, get, we gotta go dancing first. I'm sorry that we have to go dancing first. Fuck you, stop. Strongly worded letter to follow, stop. Listen here, you little shit, stop. Eat, no, don't hit the, no, don't hit the HML Gorton Brine. What are you doing? Why are you, like, boxing me out like this? That's shitty for you to do. Uh, okay. More coffins. That's actually good. We can pay our respects and reduce terror. Excellent. And this one didn't spawn a fucking hellbird. So that's great. I mean, we did just shove this little coffin, like, all the way out here, so, I mean, it was kind of, it was kind of over by itself anyway. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Hooray, coffins. That'll bring up morale. Yeah, it'll be, uh, it's perfectly fine. You know, everyone looks out of the, the windows at the coffins and they go, hey, we're not there. I mean, except for the few of us that were, and uh, that's bad. You know, this game keeps a running tally of how many officers, uh, or not officers, but how many crewmen that have died under your watch. It's not a, it's not a good feeling, first of all. And second, I can't help but think that there's going to be a point at which that will, that tally will become important. Um... And I don't want to find out what happens there. Oh, hey, if you have, like, um... 
trouble with eyeball stuff. Uh, we're going to be going into an area where that's something to uh, to be watching out for. Thank you, Mox. While we uh, have a look out for this eyeball stuff, please uh, visit a couple of those links in chat. Uh, go see if there's a way that you can donate your time, money, and energy uh, to Black Lives Matter. Also, the uh, Black Hills Legal Fund, which is uh, bhlegalfund.org, I believe, um, to support the members of the Lakota Sioux who blocked off the route to Mount Rushmore on July 3rd. Um, I believe that most of the people who have been arrested have been released now, uh, but they have all been charged with crimes and those are going to need legal representation. Uh, so, yeah, that's what that's going to. Thank you, Andy. Uh, you, will you be limping slowly down a river and every single person you killed will stumble towards you making silly ghost sounds because killing is bad now, I guess? Oh, like in Metal Gear Solid 3. That's a good game. I like Metal Gear Solid 3 a lot. It's got problems. Let's check out the mist of Woolbury, which is different to Woolbury Juxtamare proper. Fog rises from below, seeping through the wooden slats of the dock. The crowd waiting in the queue begin to sing a waterly, a watery, ululating tune of no discernible melody. We can join the song of the mist. It rises from the crowd, spreading slowly. We can offer sanctuary aboard our train. Most of those queuing are unsettled by the mist. A few are frantic with terror. This would be a good recruitment opportunity, uh, but we have full crew, so eh. Uh, or we can sell protective talismans, quote, to the crowd. Yes, yes, terrifying miss. You have just the solution. Um, no. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to join the Song of the Mists. As the final harmony dies with it, peace is restored. Even the memory of the song and your part in its choir fades from memory. Looking down, there is something in your hand, a doll embedded with many small sticks and bound with rope. It has no face, but its stare is no blanker than those on the faces of the people surrounding you. You have gained an otherworldly artifact. So that's good. Yeah, Mox, we got a new friend. And that's good. Friends are always good. Um, grab another supply just for the fuck of it. And head out this way. Let's pack up our game and head out north. Uh, into these mists that are probably super okay. Don't worry about it. The real sunless skies were the friends we made along the way, and also the eels, but mostly the friends. I couldn't agree with you more. So, as much as I like... What the hell are you? Oh, you're a lighthouse. That's good. We can interact with the lighthouse. Um. Oh, this is someone on our crew. This is a horrible thing to be around, apparently. Because look, uh, look at our flashing. That's bad. Skyfarers exposed to the haunting light of the stars are prone to sudden obsessions and erratic behavior. An irregularity in the gallery. In the galley. Hmm. Because we're on a ship, you see. An irregularity in the galley. The table is neatly laid, but the plates are glued in place and the cutlery nailed down. The culprit is quickly discovered when she tries to nail the chief engineer's hat to the chief engineer's head. Everything has its place, she explains when she's dragged before you. Um, we can confine them to quarters where they can do no harm. I disagree with that statement. Uh, we can send them back to work to keep their hands and head busy. We have a 61% chance of something vaguely positive happening out of that. Or we can issue an additional ration of brandy to the crew. 
to facilitate your crew members' return to sensibility. And we just got an extra supply for the fuck of it, so I think that might be the play. Let's just do that. That evening, your engine is loud with song and laughter. The sky shanties are perhaps a little lubricated, the humor laced with a touch of mania, but for now, the fears of the sky are forgotten. A passing cantankeri grumbles through the cold night. It tuts at the bright, glaring warmth from your windows, flicks a disapproving antennae at the noise and the hour. When you have passed it by, it is glad to have the quiet and cold of the sky back. Riz says, your aunt is in the background asking you different questions while you're driving and then answering questions you haven't asked yet and then explains to you what they ate last Thursday. Yeah. She's uh, inconvenient in a lot of ways that aren't that way. What happens here at St. Anthony's Lighthouse? The lighthouse looms out of the mist like a pale candle. Its light burns a searing path, breaking through the wispy susurration of the fog. A single platform clings to the lighthouse, allowing for engines to dock. The upper gantry hangs above it like a sentinel. A pair of elderly keepers maintain the tower. They permit guests use of their converted fuel house. It is not much of a generosity. We could climb to the top. So one of the locked off things is offer the keepers an unidentifiable squirming. Locomotives with the butchery ability can sometimes harvest squirmings, capital S, from the surrounding sea of mists. That's, that's excellent. I'm glad that's a thing. Let's try to climb to the top of the tower. The climb is harrowing, and the iron stairs are rickety and unsteadily bolted to the lighthouse's inner wall. You emerge. At the top of the lighthouse, the mists fall away altogether. You can see the lights of Walbury dappled and jolly with festive lights. You can see the lights jolly with festive lights. That's good. Engines pass in the distance, intent on some destination far from here. You linger for a time, watching the world go by without you. And our terror is fallen, which is good. We're almost down to nothing. So Perdurance should be somewhere the fuck around here. And by God, we are going to figure out where. Oh, there's the... yeah. That's what's in the mist that everyone's afraid of being around, by the way. The, um... The urchins. They're big, and um, if you have the right kind of equipment on your ship, you can cut them up for meat. And that's terrifying, but hey. Oh, nope, that's going to be the... That's going to be the turn, in it? Yeah, yeah. Not going to get close to that. That's going to explode. So this isn't fucking it either, huh? Is it off to the right of ways? It doesn't feel like it should be, but let's go anyway. Oh, there's a thing over here. We need to steal these. And it's directly on the path away from the tiny urchin, so that's good. More supplies. What if we just adopted the squirming? Um, I don't know. I don't think I would want a pet squirming on board, but, you know, it's down to the crew. You merely adopted the squirming, etc. I was born in the squirming. Raised by. I didn't see someone lying still till I was a man grown. I want to know how they discovered which nightmare creatures were safe to eat and which weren't. Um, trial and error, I would presume. 
Oh, is this it? Did we get there? Yeah, I think this is it. Yeah, this is Perdurance. We did get there. There's the evening ballroom. That's good. We're going to take a quick lap around. Before we go in. There's the parlor. Given what error looks like, they must have been super hungry for the trial. Well, I mean, the eels are basically like, uh, not not the eels that killed our ship, but the the other kind of eels, which are the other kinds of things that we can cut up and eat. They look mostly like eels, and Londoners know that you can eat those, so. It's fine. It's fine. It's probably fine. There's the Chamber of Afternoon. Perdurance proper. And then this should be a ding, too, if I can get it to go. There we go. The morning room. A new port. Hey, we are almost without terror. Let's dock. Arriving at Perdurance. On approach, Perdurance looks like an opulent mansion caught partway through a genteel explosion. Each constituent set of rooms accounted for, but separate and out of place. Each is connected in a rough circle by narrow, winding passages, all alike. The steep roofs are topped with shingled turrets and precarious towers. The elegantly disassembled Count country house perches on top of a soot-stained windowless factory whose chimneys belch gouts of smoke and fire. Uh, let us enter the parlor. The docks face a set of polished oak doors carved with a series of masked figures dancing a quadrille. Our ship. Bonk. Are you? Bonk. A flower? Bonk. Flower? Bonk. It's not flower. Okay, bye. Listen... I'm a poor driver. I'm wi I'm willing to I'm willing to just hold up to that. Uh the windows in the parlor are shuttered. The light oops, the light stained with pale yellows, blushing pinks and bruised violets. Lit with the illusion of dawn or perhaps dusk, you see a room cluttered with stiff-backed armchairs and decorative chaises set against savagely floral wallpapers in shades of burgundy, violet, and Brunswick green. A portrait of the Empress, unsmiling, hangs in an ornate gilt frame. A few visitors mill about, casting speculative glances at the exasperated butler while they pretend to examine the decor. Let's go ahead and write a port report. The Illusion of Dawn is my favorite industrial band. Oh, yeah. I think they opened for KMFDM once. That was a weird tour. It was like KMFDM, Skinny Puppy, and Delusion of Dawn. I think the place burned down. Anyway, let's write a port report. They have fake do at their shows and everything. So I went to go... Uh, I went to watch Ozzy Osbourne perform once. Because uh, I'd gotten free tickets. They were super shitty tickets. Uh, but I'd gotten them for free, along with uh, some other people. And we we went up... Like, our seats were basically behind the stage. We were at, like, a 90-degree angle perpendicular to the stage. So we were just barreling down the thing. And uh, Ozzy had this deal it was during all my life which was the the single at the time and the reason why it was during he just released an album so he's going all my life going over the top and he there's a bit in the middle during the like, guitar solo where they gave him a foam uh a foam cannon so he would just uh he took the foam cannon he just sprayed like the front couple rows with foam and that was cool and everything until it was time to go back into the chorus and he set the foam cannon down, but apparently didn't disengage the trigger mechanism. So he just shot like 
foam all over his monitors. Which was, first, first of all, very quickly and handily cleaned up by a, an unobtrusive uh, stagehand who just came out and like, disconnect, remove. Uh, but then after that, uh, when it came time to get back into the bridge, he didn't know the words. Uh, he, he'd been reading off of a teleprompter all night, and that had gotten covered with foam too. So he just like made a, a hand signal, and the 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 band behind him like broke down to just the drums, and he was clapping, going through the going through the chorus again, while a stagehand, possibly the same one, came out and fixed the fixed the teleprompter. Very good. Oh no, Ozzy's in a pickle. I'm sorry. I don't know why I felt the need to share that story. It's a good story. Let's uh, let's let's uh, do this though. Here in the here in the parlor of perdurance. Important matters. The visitors are puffed up with importance and embarrassingly eager to tell you how they obtained an invitation to the half light mask. Some through patronage or long service, others less salubrious means. All, all are desperate to spend a day in the company of the glittering inhabitants of Perdurance, the brightest stars in Albion's firmament. For here, the sons and daughters of Her Majesty's most important courtiers reside in eternal youth and sophistication. Uh, hand your port reports in to the genial auditor, the stalwart bookkeeper. That's the port report. Good. Talk to the exasperated butler. He appraises you with an officious disapproval that testifies to years of devoted training. Yes, and he leads through a leather-covered leather logbook to make clear that he is, in fact, terribly busy. Uh, let's learn about Perdurance. What is this place? He sighs. This is Perdurance, the home of the Half-Light Mask. Here Her Majesty has created a single perfect day, wherein the finest examples of the Empire's youth may reside for all time. At the day's end, there is a grand ball. When it is over, the day is spun anew with fresh hours, and all begins again. None who resides here will age even a single day. Visitors are permitted, of course, relatives and a select few others, as long as they have an invitation. Her Majesty can do that? Yes. Her Majesty has access to all of the hours in the world, or at least the Empire, and if she wants to spend a huge amount of them making sure that one single perfect day replays over and over and over again, she's going to do that thing. Uh, this is, by the way, the home of... We learned about uh, Her Majesty's courtiers. They are the deathless, and they live in the Serene Mausoleum. Uh, these, the people who live here at Perdurance, our, uh, are the, like, sons and daughters and assorted family members of those people um so that they don't have to live in a mausoleum but also don't die that's where they are uh ask about gaining an invitation to the half line mask we have one but let's ask about it if one must typically ask how to obtain an invitation, one probably shouldn't have it. Typically, they are granted to the relatives of residents. However, the Ministry of Public Decency may award invitations to those who have served the Empire. We also receive an unusual number of visitors from the Royal Society. An invitation permits the barrier entry to a single instance of the mask from morning till evening. You thank him, but he clearly wishes to impress upon you the grandeur of the matter. It is a great honor to be invited here, and even a greater one to be rewarded with a residence. The Empress is most generous with her favored servants. She He gives you a sharp look and adds, And we are all her servants, are we not? Uh, ask about the debutantes. Who is permitted to reside here? 
They are the sons and daughters of Her Majesty's most valued, most trusted counselors and confidants. The residents want for nothing. They need fear nothing. They will not grow old or no care or worry. They will be preserved forever here in the flower of their youth and innocence. These are the gifts that Her Renewed Majesty is to grant. Can they leave? Why on earth would they want to do that? To do so would be seem remarkably ungrateful. Okay. Hmm. I thought we had an invitation to Pergerance, but we do not. We can get some. But that having those was something our old captain did, and the old captain's dead. So that sucks. I spent all this time trying to get here, and we don't have those things. We can get them in London. Let's go to London. I, let's go back to London, I guess. Sorry. Whoops. But at least now we'll be able to go, like, there and directly back, right? That's fine. Oh no, I'm hearing that, uh, I'm hearing that stretchy noise that tells me there's one of those hideous birds around. Let's go back to London, I guess, has been said by every Londoner at least once, I feel like. Uh, I've never been myself, uh, but, uh, sounds right. Um, so what's going to happen here is we're going to get to London. I'm going to do some stuff while we're in BRB and then to, to make sure that we have all of the things necessary to do the things that we want to do today. Something I should have done over the course of the week and didn't. Uh, but that'll happen during the BRB. You'll hear some more clicks than usual while we're in break. And when we come back, we'll head back to Perderance and... Help the incognito princess with whatever the fuck it is she needs. It's mysterious to me. I've not finished her quest line before. Um, it concerns me, honestly. No. No. Nah, bud. Nah, don't turn around on me. Unless you want to see my heart breaking. I said don't turn around. Are you trying to make me cry? Just drive away. Oh, you're faster than I am. Uh-oh. That's not ideal. Okay, well. This was a bad plan. Let's, let's just go. Let's just go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Da 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 da. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I think they're. I think the bird thing is fighting the star explorer, so that's good. I used to, and sometimes still do. And this is just a thing about me that I thought you would like to know. Um. Uh, have intrusive thoughts. That's not the part of that I want to, like, set forward. A particularly recurring intrusive thought that sometimes just gets wedged in my head for, uh, a week on end is that song. Uh, Don't Turn Around. Except Brain provides it as, Don't turn around unless you want to make me more bacon. Don't turn around unless you want to bake me a pie. Just walk away. It, I don't know. This is just what it's like in here. We're almost back to London. Uh, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Further up this way. Oh, I was trying to figure out what part of Total Eclipse of the Heart you were singing. This is an extremely similar thing that my brain does. Yeah. 
It's not. I'm not. It's not a. Uh, it's not singular to me. Uh, I'm. I know. And being. Uh, why is Total Eclipse at the heart of my mental playlist? Any Yashi music video? Oh no. I'm so sorry. Uh, so, it's a little earlier than we would usually take a break, but I I felt a little deflated, and I feel like I need to stand up and get some water. Um, so we're gonna go to our BRB now. And uh, this is a good time for you to bang donate in chat. Check out those links. Uh, check out uh, check out our schedule too. As long as you're doing stuff, um, and I'm gonna get up, stretch my legs, get some water. I suggest you do whatever self care is important to you. And we're gonna run an ad break. If you watch the advertisements, we would make some pennies. If you choose not to, if you choose to block it, that's okay. Control what you can control in 2020. And uh, we'll catch you back here in three to five minutes. See you then. Alrighty. It's me, I'm back. And, um, so here's the, uh, the issue I ran into. I'm gonna go to the to the thing. So we visited the stalwart bookkeeper to trade in our port reports and uh, grab a invitation to Perdurance, which is what we needed. We could only get one. I think if we go to a, uh, I think if we just go to. Literally any fucking place and come back with a port report, we would be able to get a second one. So I'm gonna range out to the Serene Mausoleum, just like literally grab a port report, head back, and fix that, and then we'll go back up to Perdurance. So that we can get both of those done at once. Playing this beta test thing called Wick, but the whole thing is barely functional. Yeah. You showed it to me for a second, it looked, uh, kind of interesting, and then, yeah. It, it's stylish looking, and then isn't, isn't where it is. That reminds me, I wanted to try out Hyperscape. Yeah. I... I think I I think I don't. I, I I might just be over battle royals conceptually at this point because I got uh, long time uh, watchers of this channel will know that I was three deep in the window on fucking uh, Player Unknown's Battleground and played it like every other week. And no, damn you! The second I saw you. Like, not changing trajectory at all. I was like, oh, that one's gonna be fucky. Good. I was over Battle Royals when it found out they were a thing. Yeah, that's also fair. I really liked playing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, uh, but I got in it when it was pretty early on in PUBG's, like, conceptual career, and I was like, this is pretty good, and they'll fix it eventually. And then they didn't, and they added more boxes and didn't do anything about their uh, horrible, like, cheating and bot, uh, box farming issues. So, I stopped. I'm gonna play Apex a little bit, and that never really... That never really called to me in quite the same way. Yeah. What are you gonna do? And I have no interest in um, playing a game by Ubisoft currently. Christy, oh, they'll fix this narrator. They didn't. Voiceover Rob Howard, Ron Howard says, "Uh, it turns out no." I'm 
play the new Assassin's Creed probably because it didn't because it came free with the video card. Yeah, but that's getting it free. The fact that it's Ubisoft is currently the major detractor. Yeah. There, I am over the idea, I think, of AAA. I'm not going to be going deeply into the pain on this topic, I don't think. Uh, but I'm, I think I'm not, uh, interested in... A triple A game. I, I can't remember the last one that I played really. Uh, and I find that I have a lot more, a lot more varied experiences and therefore a lot more fun because what I'm looking for really is variety when I'm looking for, for stuff to do. Um, by uh, just playing smaller games and independent games and, uh, while I don't, and am not, uh, like, this is not a call-out post. I'm, I'm not trying to make people feel bad for wanting to play uh, a big tentpole AAA game because I can see what the appeal of them is. Um, but I, for myself, I think I'm done. It's been so long since there was one that didn't feel like at least half a disappointment. I'm a... Oh, fuck. Well... Break out Brandy, I guess. Oh, there we go. Let's just cut through this way. I think that's going to make it so that we don't run back into our squid front. Never pay more than twenty dollars for a video game. I think it's not. Uh, I think it's not bad to pay more than twenty dollars for a video game if you know there's a if the video game is worth twenty dollars. What I don't like about never pay more than twenty bucks for a video game is that it. I don't want to phrase that. I don't, I want to support artists making art. And I think that putting an arbit, like saying never pay more than 20 bucks for a video game is one of those things where it, it's meant to be this idea that you should like, the concept at the core of it is you should think about how much you're paying versus how much of an experience you're getting and how useful that is to you. But there are people who take it as a cutoff, right? And that's not quite the, the thing. Nuance, uh, it turns out, is, uh, is a rare bird. $20 was a lot for a PC game at the time, because of the quotes from the early 90s. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Andy. That's a much uh, that's a much more concise way to do that. It gets used to deny indie devs from charging what would be a fair trade for what are objectively better games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's rest and recover. Kill some terror. That's good. Don't... Oh, you're gonna turn into squids, huh? No, it's fine. It turns out it's fine. What the fuck is a Tackety Scout doing all the hell the way out here? I would pay more than 20 bucks for an indie game. It would depend on the indie game. But, I. Uh... Did I pay more than twenty dollars for Hypnospace Outlaw? I think I might have paid thirty bucks for Hypnospace Outlaw, and that was absolutely. I had some problems with Hypnospace Outlaw, but.
but it was absolutely worth it. Katie got it for me on sale for 15. I'm wrong then. But that is a that is a game that in its in its core state is worth twenty and thirty dollars. They're they're out there, the good video games. You have to find them because they don't get they get lost in the, the advertising blitz, right? How the hell much is Quadrilateral Cowboy on Steam? It does go on sale for a buck, but, I, but I'm trying to think of the, uh, the MSRP, right? I think that was $20. Yeah, that's absolutely a $20 game. Uh, let's go back to Steam and Sapphire Yards. This is the bookkeeper. Deliver the port reports. There we go. And a second invitation to Perdurant. So we can get these two things done at once. Let's depart. So now we're going to head back to Perdurant. Nope, we're going to turn around and get supplies because I used up some of my supplies to fix the, the heart sickness. Whoops. Whoops, it's fine. Um, oh, let's fix our ship while we're here. Whoops. Why didn't I think about doing that? Let's repair our hull. There we go. We're not critically damaged anymore. That's probably what was causing the, um, the more dings on our morale than usual, huh? That makes a lot of sense. I wish I were better at words sometimes. I wish I were better at words most of the time, honestly, but usually it doesn't matter. Oh, speaking of words... Speaking of words, let me um, do a thing real quick. Don't uh, don't worry about it. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to do that. I was going to uh, try and bring up the uh, soundboard. I was going to do that during the break, but I forgot about it because I was doing other stuff. And now it's too late because in order for me to, like, get to it because it's on the same... Uh, it's on the same monitor as the game, I would have to shift the game over to the left side which is going to fuck up the resolution, and then I'm going to have to shift it, uh, open the thing and shift it back, and it's a whole hassle. I'm not gonna. I'm just not gonna. I added a couple new uh, clips to the soundboard, though. We'll talk about those next week, I suppose. That's a, that's a nice taster teaser for your Monday. You have a whole week to think about what thing I could possibly have put on the soundboard, except I think I talked about it already. This red thing. Give me that red thing. Give me the thing that makes everything red. That's not it. Is it shaped like there's a bite taken out of it? Listen, those are evergreen. Those are not going away ever. I love I love that exchange uh so much. I love that actual exchange in the the Homestar Runner video. 
it's like 15 seconds uh, of two people just becoming increasingly incensed at each other. Oh, you're big. Please to quit being big. Oh, you're going to keep being big, huh? Uh, that's not ideal. I wish you were a lot less big. Yep. Sure did take off like a fifth of my health with one hit, huh? Yeah, that's real. That's real bad. What's over here? That's Skyhenge. I don't need to go near Skyhenge. Oh, and that's a time weft, so I can't go that way now either. While I'm being pursued by a big bird? Cool. Cool game. I know I can just go right over this, huh? I thought this was the thing I was going to bump into, but now it's a little further away. It's fine. Fine. It's completely fine and not a problem. Listen, I said it wasn't a problem. Why are you why are you so freaking out like this now? We always had it, we never didn't have it. Do you ding if I go close to you? No. You don't have a name, you're just some random lighthouse. Fox embarrassed to be in the same ring with you. I've been watching old um, episodes of Sidewalk Slam because I wanted to remember some of the good times in wrestling and then I remembered that there kind of haven't been. Uh, the antechamber we've been in here. The parlor. Let's uh, write a port report. Sure. Hand your invitation to the exasperated butler and join the half-light mask. Uh, can we fiddle with our officers here? Yeah. Sidewalk Slam might actually be one of those good times. Well, yeah, just watching Sidewalk Slam is good. And then, like, listening to them actually talk about the the bits of wrestling made me go, Oh, right, Noam Dar. Noam Dar was with Alicia Fox for, like, literally no other reason than his Scottish accent makes it sound like Alicia Fox. And Vince thought that was hilarious. That man runs a multi-million dollar company. He's a billionaire. Through the Empress and straight on till morning. <clears throat> the portrait of the Empress swings open. And a succession of brightly dressed debutantes, sour-faced chaperones, and prim servants stumble into the parlor. They barely have a moment to rest their feet and take a sip of tea before a panel of wallpaper slides open. The dark maw of a sharply curving passage just visible in the dawn light. The exasperated butler snatches the invitation from your hands. Remember, your invitation only lasts one day. It is a warning, but sounds a little wistful. He propels you forward to join the court in its procession. You emerge a little tender into mourning. It is morning in Perdurance. Uh, the morning room is a grander version of the parlor, presided over by the Oriette Duchess and her pink and purple silks. Dowagers of varying stateliness and aplomb take tea and converse in low tones. Other debutantes reply to correspondence, writing notes in elegant script and affixing them with sealing wax. Meanwhile, chaperones give orders to the servants and see to Perdurance's household accounts. The light is a flushed yellow, autumnally ripe. Let's find a way below stairs with the incognito princess. Dearest, uh, so again, whenever incognito princess is on the screen, there might be problems. This is, this is your warning. Your dearest mother showed me the plans, said the princess. The engineers should be back here engineering. I do so wish to observe them. Let's rush. She gestures at a seemingly solid wall and urges you to follow. The loom chamber below stairs 
Nature has made sure she is brightly colored to warn off potential predators. Yes. Uh, the loom chambers below thunder and smoke. There are rows upon rows of hour looms, each tended by weavers with their hair pinned tightly back. The heat of the cooking combines with the shudder. Mm, sorry, the heat of the cooking combines with the shudder of machinery and pandemonium. Watching over it all are theoretical engineers. Access to them barred. Engineers only states the sign in an angry font. Uh, we can get the driver. The driver is an engineer. They could get you in, or gather the rats. They're engineers. Those rodents will get us in. Let's gather the rats. Engin uh, a driver. Drivers got a lot on their mind. We're just gonna we're just gonna hang out with the rats for a bit. A rodent introduction. While the lat while the rats clearly unnerve everyone, when their knowledge of matters mechanical becomes clear, it's easy to arrange a meeting with the engineers who keep Perdurance trapped in a single perfect day. The incognito princess is enchanted by the turning machinery, and the mach and the engineers are enchanted with her. They form a hive of activity around her, competing to answer her questions. She seems unsatisfied and presses harder. Change is the one constant, though, she says. How do you truly prevent it? By what means does change try to escape your bondage? She realizes you're still there and dismisses you, saying she can find her own way back. The incognito princess has found what she sought at Perdurance. We've gotten some experience. Good. Uh, let's return to the mask, I guess. Oh, actually, we can do both at once. That's good. Uh, the morning room is a grander version of the parlor, but no, we did that already. Let's search for Wilma, then. Find her in the afternoon. A bored chaperone answers your question. Oh, the little fat one. No, she'll only come out later. Her owner doesn't wake up till the afternoon. Hidden in your sleeve, Cinder quivers with indignation. Uh, so I guess we need to wait till afternoon. Uh, we can charm the servants, we can charm the chaperones, or we can charm the debutantes. We have the best shot at chaperones, so... Let's hang out with that, then. The chaperones are not used to visitors taking an interest in them. They're usually passed over in favor of their more elegantly appointed cousins. And indeed, many of them are literal cousins, either impoverished or somehow reduced in society's eyes due to scandal or unfortunate connections. All are past the age of marriage, and at least as far as society, capital S, is concerned, the age of temptation, and are therefore fit companions to ensure the debutante's dubious chastity. By the end of your conversation, their expressions have relaxed from pinched to merely sour. Uh, morning ends. It is time to move on. We now have one debutante's favor and one servant's favor. Um, move onwards. Through the darkness. Everyone arrays themselves in a procession according to their station. The dowager duchesses at the front, debutantes just behind, then chaperones and visitors, and the servants bringing up the rear. There is much jostling for position within each group, according to rules that you cannot begin to fathom. You enter the narrow and twisting passage, stumbling in the enveloping darkness as the debutantes giggle and shout. Each step, she, With each step, the shrieks of hours being spun backwards resonates through your body, leaving you shaken and worn. You emerge blinking into the dazzle of the afternoon. Oh no, we're letting her out of our sight. She's going to burn this place to the ground. That would be interesting. I actually don't know what she... Like I said, I've not done her quest line all the way through, so I don't know what her grand plan is or why she needs to learn so much about our looming. Uh, oh, so here's Wilma. Let's convince Wilma to speak to the brigade. Oh, let's read the thing first. Here, the curtains are pulled back with tasseled ropes, allowing the clockwork sun to spill its stark gold into the dining room. The long table is set with rows of gleaming china dinner plates patterned with delicate florals. Silver cutlery polished to a high shine gleams atop a pristine tablecloth. 
servants pour endless glasses of watered wine or carry in the next stream of elaborate dishes. Convince Wilma to speak to the brigade. A plump white rat sits in a little golden cage. A dandy is idly feeding her slivers of camembert. He's happy for you to confer with his pet. Uh, this will advance the story, but failure may impact Wilma's part in it. We have a 98% chance. Dab on him. Wilma patters from the dandy's palm to yours. Her whiskers twitch as Albrecht emerges from your sleeve. You're here for my part of the number. Albrecht nods solemnly. Wilma presses close to him. Ugh. This is some German, and I don't know even a little bit how to pronounce it. I would copy and paste it into Google, but there's not a... I can't do a... I can't do a, a highlight. Uh, your sleeve twitches and Cinders pokes her head out. Wilma jumps. Neither speaks. Albrecht clears his throat. There is still a place for you, Wilma. Wilma's nose twitches. I'd like to hear that from her. After a pause, Cinders inclines her head. Wilma sniffs. That'll do, for now. As you turn, the dandy demands, I say, won't you give me something for my rat? Uh, we can give him a kiss. He's comely enough. We can give him a terrifying story. You've seen a thing or two in your time traversing the heavens. Or you can give him your sympathy. How can he bear to live in this prison? Terrifying kiss? Yeah, okay. Uh, his emerald green eyes widen in delighted surprise as you make your intent plain. Uh, his lips press to yours, and after his gaze follows you as you walk away. You found Wilma. Talk to the rat brigade on board your engine. Uh, we move on. Here, the curtains are pulled back with tasseled. We read that one already. A passage opens behind the china cabinet, and the procession forms once more. You take a breath and step into the close, stifling darkness, trying not to fall behind the passage, as the passage contorts and coils. With each step, the shrieks of hours being spun backwards, we read that. Uh, you spot a figure masked in featureless black, their face covered by a smooth oval of polished obsidian. Who are they? It's an enormous relief to spill out into the evening of the great ballroom. Everyone finds their place without a murmur, and courtly life is resumed, almost as though the terrors you just experienced never existed. Hey, remember A Plague Tale Innocence and its rat-shaped particle effects? Sure don't, says Andy, who played the entire game. Uh, sad about all of the orphans. It is evening in Perdurance. Hanging from the grand ballroom ceiling is a vast orm... Ormolu. 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 Hanging from the grand ballroom ceiling is a vast Ormolu gasolier, its spidery arms decked with cut crystal drops. It casts soft yellow brightness onto the masked dancers below as they whirl across the polished parquet floor. Music blends with the hum of genteel conversation and the sif swish of starched crinoline. The half-light mask is in full swing. There is barely room to stand, much less move. It's an alloy, says Bad Road, to which Katie retorts, You're an alloy. It's a mixture of copper, zinc, and tin. It looks golden. Good to know. Uh, I mean, let's just jam on chaperones again, because it's 100% chance and gets us favor from everyone. You help a uh, chaperone break up an assignation between two of their wayward charges. The chaperone's eyes blaze with such indignance you imagine the paste gems at her ears and throat gleam with reflected fury. As you drag the recalcitrant debutantes from behind the heavy fustian curtains, Jesus Christ, really went hog wild with that thesaurus, eh? 
You notice that the glass of the arched windows behind them is covered in a layer of soot, blocking out any possibility of sunlight. Uh, let's move onwards, I guess. We can listen to an anxious chaperone. If we had been equally accepted by both debutantes and servants, which we aren't. We, um, we ended up getting one more debutante than servant, so that's why this is locked off to us. I'm going to come back and do that later. Uh, move onwards. The music stops, and somewhere below, a mechanical rumble can be heard as the hour looms begin spinning progresses one perfect, perpetual day all over again. One of the blacked-out ballroom windows opens to reveal the passage back to the parlor at dusk, or perhaps dawn. The keening of the hours as they are spun backwards make your legs weak and your hearts pound. You feel unaccountably wearied. Um, you enter the parlor through the portrait of the Empress and limp away, sore-footed from dancing and stumbling through the dark, looking for the answers. Behind you, the members of the Court of Pergrance chatter and take tea, and make ready to begin their day anew. For tonight, and every night thereafter, is the Half-Light Mask. Um, one of the debutantes would like a word. Popularity. They do hope you'll return soon. Even a day as impeccably engineered and artfully arranged as the one at Pergrance can grow wearying unless seasoned with the occasional newness. You leave richer in gossip and soothed by the distractions of the half-light mask. Uh, briefly, we are without terror and got just a shit ton of gossip and some experience. That's... Um, we could jump back in, but I don't want to. Let's see uh, how our officers are doing. Let's put off talking to the Incognito Princess as long as we can. Uh, the Rat Brigade have Wilma as part of the account number. Who's next? A Dilemma. Cinders knocks back a shot of something unspeakable. We have to decide. Our medic, Vian, our demolitions rat, Angel, they refuse to work together. Lord knows why the lieutenant kept him in the same unit, though he did have sponge for brains and managed to bungle betraying us all. So I would venture stupidity. Anyway, Sarge knew we couldn't keep them both. Told me while he was scammered on the gym, they have both of them the same number. Wilma scampers forward. Vianne's an old friend. She's at Magdalene's. She won't leave till she knows they can manage without her. We'll need to give them a condemned experiment. Angel's completely barking, but if you want him, he'll want a party thrown in his honor. Munitions, some inspiration on our part. Up to you. We couldn't choose between comrades. All right, time to be a rat therapist. Good. The reason I knew what Ormalu was that my path was my Pathfinder character whose entire family was named after alloys. Nice. That's always fun. You have uh, when you dig into your family history a little bit. That's the reason why I didn't get along um, great with the people I played Pathfinder with uh, for a while because. I wanted to do more role-playing than they did, I think. Um, so there's that. Uh, condemned experiment or munitions? I think we have both. We just need to figure out where. Uh, recruit Vianne at Magdalene's or Angel at Polymer in Plenty's. So these are both back in the reach. So that's something for later. Uh, and... Okay. So here's the Incognito Princess. Content warning for literally everything about the Incognito Princess. Ask Her Highness about the rumors. The crew whisper that all of the engineers' impertinence just disappeared, leaving not behind but sporadic ghostly screams in the machinery. Is this true? The chatter of starlings and a swift correction. Two dozen starlings buzz around the princess's quarters. It takes some time to make yourself heard. It's not true, the princess said, gesturing at a short woman with tall hair and spectacles. My friend was an engineer. She hasn't disappeared. She's right here. 
the analytical suitor sits, staring adoringly at the princess. However, I'm glad you're here. I understand that a new poetical movement, inspired by the more melancholic strands of the celestial school, is meeting in Walbury Juxtamere. I wish to better study this notion, sadness. It, it is quite beyond me. She smiles. You're outside. The incognito princess seeks something blue in Woolbury Juxtamere. Well, it's just... It's just a hop, skip, and a jump away. I guess we'll take care of that next. Yeah, just right there. It's, pro it's probably going to be fine. I'm being told to not let her imagine anything. Which actually seems like really good advice. I don't know if there are... I, I, Katie is uh, saying that that might... Oh, there was a ding over there. Uh, that her imagining things is what's setting off the uh, these events. And while I don't know if that's true, it's a hell of a... It's a hell of a concept. Um, Mordecai's bowl? Looks like a pretty good bowl. I'm not bowled over by it. The thing about uh, Katie saying it might be desire as opposed to imagination, but she desires like a lot of stuff. I do keep doing it for her, but that's just because I'm a putz, right? You know, I could I could not. I could just dump her somewhere. That would actually be very easy to do, but could I? I've never tried. Actually that's wrong. I have tried. So I've been to uh there uh, she has a uh, a second mint. Just like uh most of the rest of your officers do where you can just kind of leave her somewhere and she'll create resources for you. Um, and I have done that before on my other, uh, on my first playthrough of the game. And she just kind of like opens up a parlor and just provides you with all of the gossip that you could possibly want to lay hands on. Uh, so let's jump into Mists of Woolbury? No. Let's join the Song of the Mists, I suppose. Our terror has fallen. Can we get into Woolbury Juxtamare proper? We can. How much is it to just pay? 250? That's a lot. And we have a pretty good amount of ministry stamped permits, so let's just do that. Uh, we need another outfit. We, uh, we went with kilts. Uh, we went with sexy underwear last time, so let's go with fabulous footwear this time. It is the courtier who goes to his knees, latticing your foot between his long fingers. Oh no, I think we did this one also. Um, the courtier does not permit you to rise, nor does he allow you to pick your shoes. Instead, he ferries you options to sift through high heels, clogged equestrian boots in the softest leather, open-toed slippers, sandals teased together from gold wires. When he is finally satisfied, he considers you for a long moment. He turns to a wardrobe and hands you several garments all your size. Once you are dressed, he dismisses you, shooing you into Walbury Juxtamer. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, locate maudlin poets for the incognito princess. A series of somberly clad people with scarves and aggressive rhyme schemes gather around a public house. This must be the meeting place of the celestial inspired poets the incognito princess wishes to see. You squeeze in the back. Oh, sorry, bump the mic. You squeeze in the back. There are rows of serious young folk before you. Poets take the stage to chart their woe at the working class's plight, or at least that's what you presume from their gestures. They're inaudible over the chattering of the chattering classes. 
the incognito princess is pressed against the wall. She ignores the rats who assemble to paw worshipfully at her feet. I would rather be closer. Uh, we can shove people out of the way, or we can impersonate the gentle folk of the press, which is a much higher percent chance of success. Poets are addicts for coverage, convincing them that your critics will get you a better position. Is she trying to literally construct a personality like it's Lego? Wow, that's a hell of a take. Maybe uh, a critical hit. Thanks. Good. I'm glad you did that joke. You locate the best-dressed poet and explain who you write for. Her face flushes with excitement and you're hurried to a prime position. You look up at a poet staring into the middle distance, describing the misery of the hour loom. Slowly, he becomes aware of the incognito princess, stutters, and changes tack, hailing her majesty in celestial verse. Soon another poet steps onto the stage, adding her own thoughts on how extraordinarily well the princess compares to the first day of spring, and then a third and a fourth. The princess takes a break from the attention of the poets and turns to you. I will meet you back on the locomotive, she says. Um... Hey, it's choice time, y'all. We can wait for just one more. We're not going home yet. Let's see what the princess is up to. Or we can leave early. That's enough of poets and princesses for now. Do we want to know what this is? I want to know what she's up to. I kind of do also. One too many. You push back into the, oh, hey, um, I'm going to be real clear about the content warning on this one because I think this goes real south real quick. So, hey, this next couple of paragraphs might be real fucking bad. When you see this face go away, it will probably be fine again if you wish to hit mute. That's that's where we're at. I'm going to start reading now. You push back into the public house to see every poet in the room hailing the incognito princess, trying to find couplets to exactly chart the bounds of her perfection. Not so blue now, my sad rhymers, she says, waving encouragingly at the poets. You can find the words, if not in English, then perhaps words more celestial. After a brief moment, they find a language whose shapes sound ill-fitted for a human palate. They rush on, joyously. One poet's tongue ignites, and then another, and then a third. Soon every poet has a mouthful of flame, and still they don't stop. In the middle of the conflagration stands the princess, beaming. This seems to be contagious. Best run. Uh, we've just lost a heart entirely, and gained a searing enigma, and like a bunch of fucking terror. Uh, that is three these rhymes are fire jokes. Good job, everyone. Good job. I'm glad you all got there. This this is a this is a stunning achievement. Uh, let's write a port report and make some money. Uh, we have some. Uh, we have some time, and we'll read Jackson Mary. Let's just ponder some unearthly tastes while we're about it. And clamor through the gnarled door. The door slides like a thief into the periphery of your vision, too short to enter unless you crawl. You pry the door open. Inside is the throat of a short tunnel, connective tissue really, 
leading out into a star-swallowed twilight. Canal slicked with juices that cannot so much be seen as felt. Your journey begins here. Push through to the other side of the membranous tunnel. You press down. It sticks to you, vernix and the warm reek of intestinal meat gelatinous and insistent that you remain where you are. Perhaps it is the Sisyphean nature of the travel. Perhaps it is your carelessness. Is this another donkey? I see no good reason to say this is not another donkey. Uh, perhaps it's carelessness, but whatever it is, it's the voice of a man ahead of... Whatever it is, the voice of the man ahead of you, salt dry and salt cold, comes at a surprise. You're late for the sermon, too, he hisses. We mustn't be late for the sermon. His hand grasps yours, tugs you through a translucent membrane across the path through church doors. You don't have time to observe the port. The air seizes you cold as a corpse's kiss, and something about it is wrong. The bedraggled parson stands before his people, palms raised. Today we stand before they who must grieve to give praise to their sacrifice. Without them there would be no joy, no agony against which we might juxtapose the sweetness of our existence. Do not ever forget this. If you forget all else, do not forget this. He raises his eyebrows at you. A pleasure to see a new member. Please, join us later on the beach. Uh, listen to the murmuring sermon. You find a seat among the parishioners, their skin whirled with strange patterns, tentacular calligraphy that might possibly be flesh. Thank you, Katie. In the meta, we can build a horror. Then pretend he's bedraggled Parson Brown. He'll say, oh, am I scary? We'll say yes, man. <laughs> then we'll get a club and knock him down. Let's listen. <laughs> that's, that's it. We'll just conspire. The bedraggled parson paces across his stage, lit up from behind by his reverence, his conviction in the sutras of his speech. Here is a man assured in his precise place in the universe. And remember, next Tuesday, a baptism at the mists. All those looking to experience a closer connection with they who must grieve, come down to shore. Uh, talk to the cultists at our right. Upon closer inspection, it becomes evident that it isn't hair that sits atop her skull, but thousands of delicate cilia. Still, aside from that one anomaly, the woman seems normal and generous with her attention. I like coming here. The parson's got such a good heart. No idea what he's trying to say sometimes, but he's got a good heart. He wants us to rise up rise beyond who we are and what we are. We've just got to give ourselves to they who must grieve. That's how I got this, she strokes her hair. In the mists, she leans in. But honestly, I'm only here because the parson's a pretty one. Uh, Semi-related in the eldersness, what the fuck is this cover art for distraint 2 switched? It's distraint I apparently have to see this cover art. Um, hmm. I'm being asked to verify my age. Because Distraint, you see, is a rated M game dealing as it does with... Huh. So the... Excuse me one moment. Let me pop up a button. And, uh, hmm, that's not it. That doesn't do the thing I want it to do. I can't make that, uh, show up on screen easily. Uh, but the cover art for Distraint 2 is not fantastic. It, it is a little anime, and I'm not certain 
how that is the thing. Uh, let's talk to the cultist on our left. You share a quick dialogue with a restless-seeming individual of indeterminate age, gender, and species. Hello. Hmm. Excuse me. Hello. They burble gently at you, their voice like a chorus of brooks. You're new. When they speak, you can see that they do not, in fact, have tongues, but a mouth like the inside of an intestine, soft with pale villi. Perhaps that is why they sound the way they do. The Bureau does not like me in Wolbury Juxtamere. They don't even like me in the off-season, which is capitalized. But I have been, but I have seen they who must grieve, and I will remember that day always. It transformed my body, my body, my body, my body, my body, my body. Uh, an unexpected intrusion. There is little resistance from the congregation, merely an affected resignation. The officers from the Bureau of Entertainments are civil as they evict the crowd. Once they've surmised that you do not belong, the officers leave you largely alone, occupying themselves instead with the task of extricating the parishioners. The bedraggled parson's disciples cooperate with only minimal contempt, moving where they're told, answering questions when they're asked, all in all, a courteous disruption. Ah, uh, come on then. Let's go, let's go. The rictus smiles of the officers are identical in their splendor, as is the exquisiteness of their uniforms and the oiled shine of their dark hair. The Bureau of Entertainment is the branch of the Ministry of Public Decency responsible for the, quotes, well-being and upkeep of Walbury Juxtamere. They take their duty seriously. Uh, go quietly. They're too busy pummeling parishioners to listen. You will surely be able to explain soon. Or, bolt from officials. Sod this. You flee, the f you flee from the Bureau of Entertainment Enforcers, who are quite naturally aghast by your audacity. This is not Whirlberry as you know it. This, without glitz, glamour, or a single tourist barring yourself. Port lies sprawled under a sky now cataracted with milky nebulae. None of the familiar constellations are in sight, and every building's a bone nod to the marrow. Despite the dilapidation, the place bustles with grim activity, and the smell, the cloying putrescence of it, a stink of hay and fecal matter brined in a miasma of dead marine life, copper and fresh bread. I don't think I want to meet they who must grieve. They who must grieve sound like party people. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll take that chance, or maybe we won't take that chance. Uh, we're now in Woolbury Juxtamare in the off-season. Woolbury Juxtamare has become a corpse. The rundown bones of its forgotten attractions swarm with bedraggled men and women, all armed with cleaning equipment. This is where the workers of Woolbury live, and labor to create the gaudy frontage seen by tourists. The beach is now a decaying mess, visited only by the cultists who attend the chapel there. To linger here, you'll need to work, but labor is poorly paid. Take other workers' jobs too often, and they'll firmly encourage you to depart. Um... Go for a walk on the beach. You can scarcely see the beach in the off-season, so dense are the mists. Beneath your feet, something crunches and cracks. Uh... Go visit the cult. Sure. Their chapel lies on the beach at the edge of the mist. It is wefted tendons and yellowing bone. The pews, a muscle, cured in salt. It's amazing how spacious this place is, given the exterior. From outside, it looks like... I also saw donkey eggs. I also saw that it was going to be like a 20% chance, and I didn't want to click that button. We'll, we'll see if we can't uh, get back to it once we're done with the cult. Uh, have a word with the parson. Finally, a gash in the crowd. You go up to speak with the parson. His voice is water, warm and hypnotic. They were kind to you, the bedraggled parson says abruptly and without vitriol, only a pale wonder, eyes fever-warm under the wilds of his hair. 
It is all he extends. Was he talking about the officials from the Bureau of Entertainment? Or someone else? The bedraggled parson sighs. They are so lonely, all of them. Empty but for the grief in their ribs. If only they would come here. Find them, he burbles. Find them. Find the lonely, the broken-hearted, the barely breathing, the ones who'd think this port could ever save them. Find them and tell them about they who must grieve. About us, about how love can turn in the heart like a key and open the soul to the universe. Speak to them of change. Tell them. The words seep from the bedraggled parson tie themselves into gibberish nonsense sounds like a spill of cold water on glass. For minutes he is in choat, in coat, in coat, in in choat. In coat, in coat. For minutes he is in coat. Then, you need clothes. The cultists cram you into secondhand finery, shabby but serviceable. Now that you are suitably attired, they bundle you across the off-season and through a door to Woolbury. The membrane blocking it shivers and twitches reluctantly about allowing you to pass through. Time tingles on your skin for several minutes after your arrival. You can gather new members for the cult? Yes. Let's do that. That sounds good to do. A man, a woman, teenagers, lanky as hounds, a couple too old for the weight of their years. They listen to the sutras and scriptures of transformation you repeat, their entire bodies poured into the act. Something in the words sing to them, and one by one they say yes, yes and yes again, discreet in their reverence. You give them directions to the cult's headquarters and pats on the shoulders. They receive your attention with the gratitude of children. Um, I think we're just going to leave here. Attend an exclusive exhibition of portraits. You need affiliation, Bohemio. You have to. Dang it. Are we just a... Are we just in a big donkey wrapped in they that must grieve, surrounded by the world at large? Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't see any good reason to say that we're not surrounded entirely by donkeys. Go for a walk along the beach and grab a donkey egg. So let's try. It's a 32 chance of success. We might just get kicked by something that claims to be a donkey. Success. Sure. The donkeys are infertile, a flint-eyed woman reassures you. None of these eggs will ever reach fruition. Um, I'm just going to not read that sentence. But they do need to be flensed from the donkeys. Otherwise, there's the risk of rot and worse. You spend a few hours with a knife, gingerly paring the eggs from the underside of their bellies. They come apart in clusters, soft and milky gray, their inhabitants silvery and still. So that sucks. Let's leave. Uh... Leave the off-season for the docks. Let's get, a let's get away from here. I'm done being in Woolbury Juxtamare for a while. We'll come back sometime and see uh, how the cult's getting on with their new recruits. For right now, I kind of just want to head back to London and, uh, and wrap up. Uh, did we do anything else? for our officers. Are we missing stuff? Uh, Incognito Princess wants to... Oh no, we didn't ask what happened at the poetry reading. Although, we know what happened at the poetry reading. Let's ask, I guess. Uh... 
uh, a Stoker whispered at the end that burned. Uh, Stoker whispered that the inn burned down, killing all the poets. Is this true, your highness? Once more untrue. It's not true, captain, says the incognito princess, lounging on a mound of dead starlings, roughly shaped like a chaise lounge. She gestures at the floor, crouching beside the analytical suitor as a gaunt man with wild eyes. My poetical suitor survived. You really should not listen to gossip. It is no time for gossip. My journey now takes a more serious bent. She explains her next destinations. Firstly, she has to find a crossroads in Eleutheria. She is of the opinion they are often south of the transit relay where one arrives. You will require an unlicensed chart there. Secondly, a trip to see the devils in Caroline on the matter of rings. She might need a handful of bee souls for that. I don't know how we get bee souls. So that's good. What the fuck does our aunt want to do? I haven't even spoken to our aunt. Good lord, are you all right? She immediately bakes you a batch of scones. She doesn't even comment on the order in which you applied the jam and the cream. I know what'll cheer you up, she says briskly. I've been invited to a little soiree by Bunty. She paused. An old school friend. I think she's head of the deniable constables now. You'll come with me, won't you? It'll take your mind off things. She considers for a moment. I must warn you, it's a very particular evening. Old entities put aside, that sort of thing. It's a Carolyn. Hmm. Good. I'm glad that's happening. Uh, you need to go to places I don't have access to yet. You want to go to Eletheria. You need to go back home. You need to go to the Reach. Okay, so we're gonna stop in London. And I suppose next week we're going to spend a little time in the Reach uh, hanging out with our officers. And I think we'll make our way into Eleutheria before the end of that stream. Uh, so we'll have a whole new Circle of Heaven to explore um, and get murdered in, presumably. Eletheria is interesting because there's uh, there's actually like a couple of different major hubs, uh, and they all hate each other. So choosing a side there isn't like um, isn't the one-on-one -on -one affair like it was in the Reach, where it was like, do you, do you want to be on the side of the like London enforcers and the company that are. Uh, working miners to the bone, or do you want to be on the side of settlers trying to, like, make their way? It's, uh, a lot more... I was about to say convoluted, and I guess I mean that, but convoluted has, like, a negative connotation with... Yeah, yeah. Thank you, complex is better. Yeah, Mox, we've barely gotten comfortable with getting murdered here. It's only happened the once, and I think we handled it badly. But, uh, hey... Time waits for no one unless you have enough hours in a big enough loom, I fucking guess. What happens if I do this? Nothing. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Tempest, fuck it. We're just gonna pull into here. It's gonna be okay. Let's just sell off our port reports while I'm thinking about it, so I don't like miss doing it. Visit the stalwart bookkeeper. Deliver our stuff. Good. Uh, so that's gonna be the stream uh, for the evening. I'm gonna hit a couple buttons. This one's going to quit the game. And then this one's going to take us to the outro screen. So, hi, everyone. Welcome to the outro screen. Uh, I've been Christy, one of five women who stream on this channel, along with my wife, Katie, who's been in the chat with us, and her sisters, Annie and Alice and Sue. Uh, 
if you're uh, new here, we stream six days a week on this channel. So if you wanted to uh, manipulate the follow button to your dark uh, desires, uh, you'll be informed when we go live. Uh, let me run down our schedule for you so you know what you're getting into. Tomorrow is Tuesday. That's going to be Andrea. She'll be starting uh, the first stream of her Ace Attorney, uh, Phoenix Wright uh, Ace Attorney playthrough. Uh, Ace Attorney is a really fun game with a lot of great writing and wonderful animations. You should come and check it out. Uh, it's quite good. And I think Annie's going to have a lot of fun playing it. It's always more fun, I think, when the person really enjoys uh, what they're streaming. To, mm, I'm sorry, the day after that is Wednesday. Wednesday will be Sue playing Monster Hunter. Speaking of people who enjoy playing the games, uh, Sue really likes Monster Hunter and watching her battle the, the, the big animals is a lot of fun. Thursday will be Alice who is nearing the end of Chrono Trigger. Uh, this probably won't be the last stream, but she is getting into the end game content. So come and watch for that. Uh, after that is Friday, that'll be Katie with Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, the game that shouldn't work and absolutely does. After that is Saturday. We don't stream on Saturday. Sunday is, uh, is going to be our community day, which is going to be more uh, Claw, more of our tabletop RPG game of Dust City Outlaws. I'm excited because I never know what the fuck those streams are going to consist of. And I'm the GM for that. I have an idea of what's going to happen, and then I'm always proven wrong. Uh, and then Monday will loop back around to me with more of this, more Sunless Guys. Uh, if you uh, want to have a look at the that schedule, you, you can go to truckcommunity.neocities.org, where our schedule, along with the schedules of our stream team, and Ammonium, Xenon Fiber, Riz Plays Games in the Land of the Rising Sun, and Bad Road live. Uh, they, are, by the way, are our stream team, and you should go check them out also, because they are great streamers, worthy of your time and attention. And what's the next thing after that? Uh, continue to find ways to support uh, Black Lives Matter and Indigenous peoples. Uh, it is important. This this is the one. If it's not this one, uh, I I don't know when it will be. Uh, and if you want to watch us on YouTube, we have a literal month or more of straight up content. If you want to watch us play video games, that's at uh, youtube.truck.community. It's, uh, it's a good time over there. I think that's everything I need to talk to you about. Uh, this music was Clock Tower by Xenon Fiber. Thank you, Xenon, for allowing us to use the music Clock Tower off of your album Spaced Off, which can be found at xenonfiber.bandcamp.com. And that's everything, I think. Uh... Have yourselves a good evening, and until I see you next time, stay safe.